Hi everyone, this is Barbara Beckman here and I want to take a look at some of my jelly prints and show you them today. I just made a bunch of these this week using my jelly plate. Totally love the jelly plate. I've been using it for many years. This one's pretty beat up, but it still works perfectly fine. So here are some of the prints that I just made that I printed on to deli paper. Now online you'll hear other artists talking about deli paper, but you never really hear them say where they get it, what kind it is. So I experimented when I first started to do it on the deli paper. I had no idea what I was really doing, to be honest with you, because I had been used to printing on cardstock for so long. So it was kind of experimental. I tried parchment paper, wax paper, every kind of paper you could pros probably like imagine. And nothing really worked uh, that great. I wasn't sure what I was doing wrong or what kind of paper these people were using. So one day I was in Costco and I happened to stumble upon a box. And it's a big box and it just said all purpose dry wax paper. And I thought, what is dry wax paper? Well, it basically is wax paper with a, uh, a lot less of that wax on it. And it's non-greasy. It's grease resistant actually. And this box came with 500 sheets and they are quite large. They're 15 by 10 and three quarters size. So I could fit two plates on one sheet. So I only have one large jelly plate and I just use half of the sheet on when I do one print and then I just turn it to the other side and use the other side. So I'm staying on the same side. I'm not doing the back side of it. I'm doing the same side, just left and a right side. So that's why you're going to notice some of these prints look a little different if you compare the left to the right side, and that's the reason why. So this deli paper that I use, it's made by a company called Glenvale, and I'll try to find it online and put a link to it. They also make the famous Dixie Cups that you see that are so popular. So um, it's a brand that's been around for a long time, and this is a commercial product because it is for a deli. And I think you could find this at like your restaurant depot areas too, if you have one in your area. We have quite a few different distributors here in New York. So I'm just in a great location where I live where I can find these things. But Costco definitely has it. And I'm sure our BJ's or Sam's Club, they'll probably have this too. So this particular deli paper works really, really wonderful for me. Now, I use very inexpensive craft paint, but I've heard other artists on YouTube say that they don't use their inexpensive craft paint because it dries or they have problems with it. So I think it really is based on location and where you live and how fast your paint's drying. So in New York, again, I'm very blessed with great weather. Um, it's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's just right. So my paint doesn't dry. I don't have any problems like with it drying so super fast. So I can use the inexpensive craft paint. Most of these were done with AC Moore brand, and I think it was less than 50 cents a bottle. I also shop in the clearance section a lot for, for stencils and stamps and anything that I could use to use on my jelly plates. So jelly printing is basically uh, a series of layering to come up with different designs or patterns or color and texture. And everyone does it slightly different. So as you play with it, you're going to find your own niche and see what you like and see what you don't like. You can utilize anything in your house. You don't have to buy anything special for this. In fact, I was at the dollar store and they had Betty Crocker utensils, like your spatulas and other weird kind of things. I don't even know what they would be for for cooking. But the utensils were plastic, or not really plastic, rubbery, a soft rubber. So I purchased them for a dollar and I knew I wasn't going to eat with them. I was going to use them to draw on my jelly plate so I can make swirls. I could drag it across and make different textures. So use your mind and think creatively outside of that box. So you don't have to run out to an art store or craft store and buy anything fancy for this. Walk around your house. You can use washi tape. You can use rubber bands. You can use string, twine. You can use anything that you can use as a stencil or mask out areas. Anything that's not sharp, like a paper clip, I would definitely not suggest anything sharp because it will ruin your jelly plate. Now, if you scratch your jelly plate, that will be there. That scratch will consistently be there. It will never come out. Although, there are people on YouTube that have said that they know how to take out 
things like that. I'm not sure how they do it. And to be honest with you, I didn't pay too much attention to it because I just know that I don't want to ruin my plate. So I don't put anything on it that I know will scratch it. It's as simple as that. If you do scratch it though, you can always flip your plate around and use the other side of it. it will work perfectly fine. So I have many different sizes just because I like to play with the plates so much. I have sizes that would fit your like uh, cardstock where you were making handmade cards. So I think that's like a five by seven. And I have ones that are even smaller, the kind of size like an index card. So maybe like a four by six. And I have this large one, which is probably around an eight by 10. I use them all the time. I make a lot of prints. And I also utilize the paper that I use to clean my brayer on. So I clean my brayer on, I keep a piece of cardstock or a pile of cardstock on the side of my prints as I'm working. And that's what I use to just go up and down with my brayer to get any paint that's on the brayer off and clean it. So those pieces of paper, the cardstock that I clean the brayer off on, I will use those at the end and I will add stamps to them or I will mask out some areas with stencils and I'll just kind of jazz them up so they look like they were made into prints from the start with a lot of layering. Because there is a lot of layering from when I've been cleaning different colors off on it that it just gives me extra prints to have on hand. Now those prints I like to use in my landscapes because they're a little thicker. They work well for that. But I use them for making handmade cards and a lot of other projects. Now the deli paper is nice and thin, perfect for art journaling, perfect for using it to cover like wood or boxes, cardboard. You can use this paper on so many different projects and you can really, um, you can change it up if you say for instance you it's dry and you had it in your you know shelf for a long time you can pull it out and if you wanted to change it you can certainly take a stencil and add a little more it still takes a lot more paint um, I have yet to max it out with the amount of layers that I've used on it and I really tend to layer a lot this is very layered here it's sometimes five or six layers um, just for where I call it done and then, like I said, I'll pull it off the shelf and be like, you know what, let me add some more blues to this or some greens over here. And so I can always add layers on. So it does take a beating. So I really highly recommend this weight deli paper. Standard weight, dry wax, all-purpose deli meat paper. It's the best. So here now I'm going to show you some of the cardstock, which I used to clean my brayer off on. So they still look like prints that I've actually worked on. And it's, again, just by cleaning and going up and down different directions with different colors. And as you can probably see in a minute, I'm sure I'll come across one where I added some stenciling to. And here's a prime example of that. So here's one I added a stencil and used some turquoise paint on top of. And on this one, I used some white paint and some white circles. So it certainly changed it and made it look like um, I actually was doing this as a print. So you can utilize anything that you have. So let me talk to you about... Um, the layers and how important it is for me to layer. I layer, my first layer is very, very thin. And that's when I kind of determine the overall color that I want to end up with. So say for instance, I start with a dark blue, I will add a contrasting color that you'll see on top of that. So my next layer might not cover the whole plate. It might just be parts of it, whether it be shown in a stencil or from a stamp but I'll make that say like a turquoise color. So against the dark blue, it would definitely pop. So I try to think about what would the next layer be. So now I would have a dark blue and a turquoise. So what would contrast with that? Maybe a pink or an orange. So I try to think as I go, I don't plan the whole thing out from step one to you know step seven or whatever. I do it as I go. Um, I'm always putting the, the prints aside and letting them dry and going on and then as they dry I'll come back and I'll grab another one as I have something out on my jelly plate that I think is interesting that would make a nice color on top of it or shape and I keep grabbing the ones that are done on my floor they're all scattered around me and I just randomly work on all of them kind of at the same time um, here's one with some sparkle in it this was some kind of glitter paint that I used and it works really wonderful. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of paper 
when I was done with this. This one here almost reminded me of leather in a way, or like scales. It had a lot of texture to it. So you can get a lot of really interesting effects with it. You just play. Um, I was intimidated when I first started because I had seen somebody else do it and they just work so quickly and they seem to know what to pull and what stencils and I thought I don't understand this how do you do all this it was just beautiful the colors were amazing the, their textures were wonderful there, there are different things to look at there was like triangles over here hearts and circles and the paints were all layered nicely and I thought I, I can paint I can draw I can draw people how do I do this and it honestly, I think everyone just does it their own way. And you'll find your own way and your own niche and what works for you. You really will. It's really about experimenting and seeing what you like personally. Um, this one here has a stencil on it. But I utilize parts of the stencil. I don't necessarily utilize the entire stencil. So for instance, if I buy one that is like a flower, I don't want to see that flower constantly. So I will take parts of the flower and incorporate it on my plate, or my print rather, and you won't really notice that it's a flower. And then after all the layering is done, you really don't see all of it. So I can use that one ugly flower throughout everything, and it's just added interest to the prints. So here's one that I added some gold paint to, and gold paint always fancies it up and gives it a little bit of pizzazz. Um, I like throwing gold paint in there, especially against black. So this started out with a black layer, and it was really wonderful when it was done. Um, I used a lot of different stencils for this one, and I liked the bright yellow, and um, here are some contrasting colors again. You have the purple and the red. And I'm trying to kind of move it so you can see all the different layers. It's kind of hard to film it, but it's quite layered. And I just happen to like this look. They're all different, which is also great. You'll never get the same print twice. Um, and I love that about it. And sometimes I don't want to use it because I'll fall in love with the piece of paper. But it's really a lot of fun. I hope you try this. It's uh it just it's kind of like a free kind of art that's how I consider it and what I mean by that is like being a portrait artist I really have to take my time and people are commissioning me and you know paying me a lot of money to make their portraits look like their loved ones or their house and I have to spend a lot of time and sometimes it's stressful I do a lot of portraits for realtors here in New York and they hire me and they give my portraits out to their clients as closing gifts. So it gets stressful because one, it has to look like the house and two, I'm on deadlines and sometimes closing dates may change and sometimes they're pushed up a little bit and I'm scrambling to get things done. So my job overall can be stressful at times. So this is like free play, meaning freedom. I have the freedom to just create whatever's inside me that I feel is wanting and needing to get out. And it's just a wonderful form of expression for me. And it's not really messy. Like in the beginning, I thought, oh, this is just so messy. The paint's everywhere. It really isn't. I take my whole plate when I'm done. I bring it to the kitchen sink and I hose it down. And it's as simple as that. The paint just kind of runs right off of it. I return it back to its original packaging. And I don't really even wash it off. I may dab it very lightly with a paper towel, but that's it. And it's back on the shelf in no time, ready to be used. Now, it does come with a piece of plastic, and I recommend keeping that so you can put your plate on that as you're working, just so it doesn't slide around. Um, it just kind of gives it a nice, stable place to work off of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up some of this video because I don't want to bore you and I don't want you to be, you know, losing track of the message I'm trying to send to you. And what message is that? My message is, is to have fun and remember what it's like to be five years old and be carefree and create and not have any fear. And if you can do that for an afternoon of jelly, you know, print making, you're really going to enjoy the process of it and you're going to have some beautiful work at the end of it. So um, I hope you really try this. Please also leave me a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know if you have any questions or, you know, something you want to see me try or maybe give me suggestions on what I can incorporate into my work. Um, I'm always looking to learn and to do something new. 
And um, of course, I think as artists, we need each other. We need each other to keep each other inspired. And um, it's very important to stay connected. I mean, I'm in my art studio all day and I'm surrounded by animals. In case you haven't heard my other videos, I have a parrot who chimes in constantly. He's actually asleep right now. This is definitely his bedtime. And it's really the only time he doesn't bother me. Um, but you'll hear dogs walking around. You'll hear a dog leash here and there. And that's just how I work. I'm surrounded with my lovely animals all day that keep me company when my children are in school. I work from my home studio here in New York. And I'm very blessed to be able to do what I love for a living. And I'm blessed to be able to sit and play. So my, my purpose of bringing these videos to you is to encourage you and to also reach out to the art community. And I've met a lot of friends this way online. Yeah, I've never met them. And, you know, sometimes they come to New York and want to meet up. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a little nervous because I don't know these people. But, um, you know, over time, I've been talking to some people online for a couple of years now. And they've taught me so much about art and sharing their wonderful work with me. So if you have Instagram, please tag me in something that you do. Um, I'm Barbara Beckman with two N's at the end of that, art. So Barbara Beckman Art and tag me and um, let me see what you're doing. And, you know, maybe we could uh, keep in touch that way and share ideas. And, of course, I'll be trying to make more videos to bring to you to not only inspire you, but it keeps me inspired as well. And it's a great way to, as I said, meet other artists like myself and kind of get me out of the studio sometimes. Um, and just uh, discovering what else is out there and what's new in the market and what people are using and new, new paints that come out. So as artists, I think it's important for us to reach out and to communicate with each other and to share ideas and keep each other inspired. And it's just, it makes a happier world if we are treating each other with kindness and encouraging each other and wanting the best for each other. So that's basically why I do these videos and they just, they make me happy. And, um, I also feel that, you know, I have children and sometimes I think, yeah, they see me painting every day and it's so busy and we're rushing from sports and different things. And I stop working when they come home. Like that's always been a rule of mine because family always comes first to me. So these are kind of a nice little thing for them to watch. I know that um, my older sons, I have two sons in college and, you know, they'll give me the thumbs up or they'll watch. And I'm like, did you really watch that? Because they're not really interested in what I do. Sometimes I feel like, you know, oh, she's just painting again because they grew up around this. But it's like neat when, you know, at the dinner table, somebody will say to me, wow, you know, that's really cool. I didn't know you, you did this. And how did you do that? And I, you know, they watch my videos. So, yeah, I'm doing it for a little bit of a bunch of different reasons. Um but overall, I, I just like communicating with people and please leave me comments. If I talk too much, you know, leave that comment there. You're not going to hurt my feelings. That's how I'm going to learn and grow. I'm going to grow and learn from you also. So as I'm teaching you maybe something new today and how to use the plate and hopefully you're finding inspiration from me, I'm going to draw that right back from you and I'm going to pull anything I can to inspire me and to keep me creative and the creative juices going. And I will always try to be my true authentic self with you because I don't want you to be intimidated by trying anything like this. Anybody is, can do this. Everybody's an artist. I believe that everybody has something inside of them that they can bring out and create in some sort of form. Um, you know, whether it be through music or through singing or through their artwork or through drawing. So I think it's really important to be in touch with that creative soul that's inside of us. And I would really love to hear from you. Comments, like I said, please subscribe to my channel. And please give me the thumbs up if you like the video. Or the thumbs down if you're not happy with it. Uh, but if you do that, look, kindly leave me a message to tell me what's wrong. So I can definitely improve on it. I would really, really appreciate that so much. So anyway, I'll speed this up a little bit so you won't be so bored. I'll put some music to it. And I really want you to have a great day. Please create happy creating and always remember to be your true authentic self and just enjoy the process. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now.